Hello, Alan Baldwin here, High Valley Angler. I want to take a few minutes to show you what I was using to catch my uh, fall bass on this year. Uh, the bass as well as the uh, hybrids you'll see in the video were caught on these basically three or four same lures. Uh, right here they are. Uh, hog wild catfish bait, a bobber, and this big sinker. <laughs> What I was using was a shad wrap number five to number seven. This was basically the number five is what I was using most. Um, I was using the shallow runner most of the time. I'm throwing a deep runner, but being that the shad are schooling and running fairly shallow this time of year, uh, I went with the shallow. And then this guy here. I wired, uh, rigged it up weedless, as you can see the hook's recessed in here. If they bite down, it's exposed. With this type of head, you can you can swim it. It's not real heavy. You can swim it, or you can drag it along slow. This tail will work. Just kind of skip it along. But most of the time, when it hit the water and I started to move it, is when I got my bass on it. And this was probably the most popular on bass this year. This fall, I should say. It's a Kai Tech and it's rigged on a lead head here with an underspin. And this underspin seems to be just about the right size that the vibration and thump it gives off is real similar to the tail. At least it, this size seemed to work the best, the fish seemed to like. And there's more than one way to rig it. I also done pretty good with it, rigged up on a chatter bait. Chatterbait worked just as good, probably, as this one. And I also threw it some with the skirt on it, which basically it's just another chatterbait, but it just has the bluegill skirt on it, bluegill colored high tech. Just gives it a little more bulk in the water, but I didn't really see that that done any better than the one without the skirt. It's just something you have to experiment with. And as you can see, I used two colors this year. I used bluegill and I used shad, which is common for the bass to be feeding on in the fall. And then the last one I used was a turd. Have you ever heard anybody fishing with a turd? Well, that's what this is called. Anybody familiar with a Ned rig? Because I ain't telling you what it is. <laughs> no, actually, they call this a turd, a TRD worm. It goes on this little lead head. You can get them with a wire guard or weed guard or without. And basically what you can do with them when you throw them in the water is they will set just like that if you don't do anything. And a lot of people fish them that way, just leave them lay there. And myself, I prefer put it in and just drag it, as slow as I can drag it. Just let it kind of wobble across the bottom like that. But I'd like to tell you that I was using a, a special trick to catching them, but actually when I caught them on it this fall, as soon as it hit the water, before it even hit the bottom or I could set the hook, they had it. Just that quick, the bass did. The good thing about these, I like to put a dab of super glue down here, even though they've got a barb on here that's just incredibly strong of holding it on there, but you can see you can fish that thing all day and it's going to last you. It doesn't pull off the hook. It's actually made out of a different kind of silicone and these. These here don't stretch that much. If I pulled much harder I'd rip the tail off. As you can see on that, they'll just they'll stretch forever. And they do catch fish. You look at it and say, that's not going to catch anything, but you would be surprised what these little things will do. But that's what I've done this fall to catch my fish on and hopefully these will be some tricks you can try that will work for you and these aren't too big of a bait to throw around here in the fall your fall shad, your one year old shad will be just close to this size, a little bit smaller but as you'll hear me say in the video when they talk about match the hatch I like to go a little bit bigger just so 
Mine stands out from the crowd, and that's the one they usually want to single out. They'll single out the bigger one, the smaller one in the crowd, or the one that seems to be lagging like it's injured. So, as you can see, I can mimic them all with these. Work them, work them fast, work them slow, find out what's going to do for you. And that's the way I go about it. Uh, bad thing is, when I was editing my videos down, had trouble with a laptop, so I had to try to convert a lot of stuff in files and get it over onto my new laptop. And in the process, I lost all my footage of the bass I caught this fall. Luckily, I do have them saved on picture, so I'll try to add the pictures on here just so you can see some of the bass I caught. But uh, mostly what you're going to see in the video is just the hybrid stripers that I caught. And I was actually bass fishing, and those were mixed in with the bass I caught. I just when I edited it down, I put the stripers and white bass on one video in one file and put the bass on another one. So if you look at the pictures, you'll see I caught a few smallmouth that were decent this fall, as well as a, quite a few uh, spotted bass. So, hope you enjoy the video. Okay, in the fall of the year, I don't know if you can see that out there, the ripples on the water. That's one of the things you want to look for. This is a good location. Look for shallow flats mostly sandy or muddy bait fish will be chased up in by your bass and white bass if you want to look for bait fish at a distance watch for seagulls or different birds that you know feed on bait fish look and see where you can see them circling or sitting in trees that'll get you to them quicker but when you see them schooling like that, if you don't see them splashing out of the water and scattering, don't throw in and spook them. Anytime you want to throw in there is if you see them scattering because you know there's something running them. So you don't want to break up the school if nothing's chasing them yet. I don't know if you can see the school of shad right here in front of me. That's what they'll be feeding on if you're going to catch anything. Most of the time you hear people say match the hatch, which is find something similar in appearance and similar in size. And most of the time that'll work, but sometimes I like to step it up and go a couple sizes bigger because it'll stand out from the crowd and that's the ones they'll go after. You can either throw one that looks crippled and can't keep up with the crowd, or you can throw something that's bigger that looks like the main course. Fishing a spot here where I usually catch a lot of nice stripers. I've got one on now. Looks to be pretty big. Yeah, it's a nice one. The nice thing is when you find these, this size, there's more here.
Sorry I didn't catch it on the film earlier. But this is where I'm fishing at. What makes it so good is, is they raise and lower the dam below. Current will rush in and out of here. Which, as anybody knows, fishes for stripers. They love current. Because that's where a lot of your bait fish will run to. But there should be more here because they usually run in schools. <laughs> 